Well, I know what it really is. And it's not cold fusion, it's superwaving fusion. And it's not fusion. That's why I call it superwaving fusion. Because fusion implies matter that is fusing, smashing them together. And yet, what we're really talking about is waves waving having the higher frequency compression, synchrony, heat, motion. So it's no longer the, the idea, uh, at the micro level, it's no longer the idea of, the only reason they use cold fusion was because it wasn't as hot as the sun, okay? And they're, they're doing it in a laboratory at a cooler level, but it's no, and it's no longer, it, but it's still hot. <laughs> the peaks are hotter than the troughs, <laughs> okay? If I had you exercise when your peak of the heart rate is the highest frequency amplitude in the peak, you're gonna have a higher temperature <laughs> when that's happening compared to when you're sleeping at night and things spread out and your body temperature lowers. Okay, so, you, so therefore, the idea of fusion is really motion. It's the dynamics of heat and motion, uh, and that's what it really is. And so it is everything to know why it works this way, not just I, I accept it blindly and there's a whole, we're just accidentally like we got this methodology. It's predictable. I'm not a physicist. I didn't know it from Adam from physics. You know, I took a couple of courses in college. But when I saw what Pons and Fleischmann did, I said, oh, I know what that is based on the heart wave. Ah, I'm just take it right down, of course. And then I, I'd been reading a little bit, you know, things like the Tao of Physics, you know, and books like that. And I started to read like crazy. And I said, oh, my gosh, this is simple. It's not complicated. It's the way nature works. There's an order to nature, and we can work with it. 